नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सत्तोलॉजी डी बंकिंग मिथोलॉजी सत्तोलॉजी मीन साइंस ऑफ ट्रुथ स्टडी ऑफ ट्रुथ अपोजिट ऑफ दैट इज मिथोलॉजी व्हिच इज साइंस ऑफ स्टडी ऑफ फेक लाई और इमेजिनेशन सो प्लीज डोंट यूज द वर्ड मिथोलॉजी फॉर योर ओन हिस्ट्री इफ इट इज वेरीफाइड बाय एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल और आर्कियोलॉजिकल और फोकलोर बेस्ड प्रूफ्स एज वेल आई कंसीडर फोकलोर एज अ इंपॉर्टेंट ट्रेडिशन बिकॉज़ इट इट गिव्स यू एन आईडिया अबाउट व्हाट कैन बी अंडरलाइंग further research can prove you the proofs of that particular location or the incident i can guarantee you that many of you did not know i asked the question yesterday what was the original name given to america america is a portuguese name by native americans and you'll be shocked to know the answer is turtle island because according to the traditions of native americans they assume that the earth is supported by a turtle and there is a an ocean beneath the earth and the turtle supports the earth on its back that's what the native americans believe it's called turtle island so i asked the question yesterday's show but i'm giving the answer today and i will put the answer in the so people who are watching yesterday's show and if they want to see the answer they have to watch this show as well so my next question to you is that which was the largest native american group in usa which made up the original it was a, it was a combination of five nations covered most of the east coast and the central so including canada by the way so so that is a question give me an answer later on or you'll get the answer tomorrow morning i have very very special guest who is a researcher he is a chartered accountant in usa we call them cpas and public accountants and also he is also a company secretary which usa doesn't have any position of that but loosely we'll call it legal counsel and legal and the, and the, and also he is a he has contributed to building the courses at the one of the premier indian management institutes called iim ahmedabad so let us welcome dr ankit shah namaskar namaskar welcome to the show thank you your predictions have been really And, and we have been speaking to each other your predictions on on twitter if people want to follow him ankit shah i will send you his twitter handle and you can follow him but ankit shah s a n k i t t s h a h shah and then you'll see many of the predictions over there so before we get on to the program one thing you tweeted very it was talking to me you said stark extreme poverty knocking the door of the west so on what basis you saw that so uh, if you go to the history of money and economics um you realize that india and china jointly produced more than 50% of the world gdp for 1700 years out of the last 2000 years of recorded human history that is what 85% of human history that's that's how rich asia was so whatever happened that happened in the last 300 years if if i may say a kind of an aberration where the britishers had this colonial rule uh, colonies world over i realized that a lot of a uh, lot of loot that has happened from the asian continent which was shipped back to britain and the british savings which uh, built most of the western nations including united states canada or uh, uh, australia or uh, several parts of europe so a lot of these western nations are built by the british savings of the indian and the asian loot that happened during this colonial uh, era that was there now when i'm saying that extreme poverty is approaching the west knocking the doors of the west that comes from this a particular understanding of economics where in the last 50 years the us dollar as the reserve currency uh, has created an economic model where the west assumes the role of financialization uh, of the asian and the middle east manufacturing and producing now what is going to happen and it is very interesting to know in the last 50 years that is from 1971 when president nixon um unhooked the us dollar from the gold standard what happened was this particular concept of fiat currency came into force 
Uh, along with that, in 1973, Henry Kissinger sealed a deal with Saudi Arabia in what we call as the Oil for Security Program, wherein the entire crude oil of the Middle East, that is OPEC, was to be sold in US dollars. And in exchange, the West, particularly the United States, would provide security to the Gulf. Uh, so from then, that's 1973 to 2023, this 50 years of cycle of dollarization has completely reversed. Reversed in the sense that the role of United States have now completely flipped in the sense that the role which the West assumed of just doing financialization of the manufacturing and the actual produce of Asia and the Middle East, uh, that is now in tatters, which means that the world of fiat currencies is going to come to an end very, very soon. How does it happen? Well, uh, there's a history of how currencies become uh, the reserve currency status. So before, uh, you know, the pattern of leadership passed from uh, Britain to United States, pound was a reserve currency status. Um, now, how does the reserve currency status change? So two important facts that the world needs to be aware of when we talk about economics is one, uh, energy is a real reserve currency. Okay. Uh, dollar or pound, they were just riding on it with military might or or whatever diplomacy that they did, the West did. All right. Uh, gold and silver is a real purchasing power of the currency. All right. You can issue electronic entries if you talk about private cryptos. You can issue currency notes. The central banks can issue those. But the real purchasing power is gold and silver. So when United States uh, had this particular role during the World War where it supplied war supplies to the ally allied countries in Europe, it collected all the gold in exchange from the European allies. Once entire gold in physical terms was accumulated with United States and Britain uh, lost the hegemony after the wars uh, or the or the diplomacy might if we call it after that with the ownership of the physical gold that united states had it could impose united states dollar as the new reserve currency and in the bretton woods agreement after the world war so this is how a reserve currencies a shift all right, generational shift of reserve currencies take place. So from 2016, what we are witnessing is a de-dollarization drive by Asia, where Asia has started collecting gold from the West, gold and silver, precious metals from the West. And as we speak at this year, that is 2022, India has, uh, I mean, literally wiped out, uh, if I say, uh, London bullion stock market, right? and also the COMEX, right? So the West is passing on gold and silver or, or, or you know, tacit arrangement, or I don't know what that is, but Asia is basically collecting gold and silver from the West. And once Asia has this entire uh, chunk of physical possession of gold and silver uh, in, in a good, uh, you know, decent quantity, it is very obvious that the dollar is going to lose the reserve currency status. Now, dollar as a fiat currency, all fiat currencies, as I see, foresee, are going to fall anyways. Um, but what does it mean when dollar loses the reserve currency status means that, you know, countries which are doing bilateral trade in dollars, say India is trading with Sri Lanka. The realization is why do we need dollar in between? And what that means is that the endless capacity of the West of printing currency gets suddenly stopped and once the printing endless printing capacity of the fiat currency led western countries stop what that means is that uh, the lifestyle of the western countries are going to get a big big trip so this is where this entire uh, you know prediction comes into being that the fiat currencies are going to fall uh, asia is going to launch uh, brics currency which is brazil russia India, China, and South Africa. And from what I understand and my reading is, there are 30 nations which are intent on de-dollarization. Um, the BRICS currency would be launched next year. The pilot transactions will start, after which 
dollar would be gradually ousted from the reserve currency status, which means that the entire uh, social benefits which the United States government and the European governments as well, because euro also has 20% reserve currency status. So all the social benefits in terms of uh, entitlement benefits, Medicaid, retirement, 401k, and all of these are going to have a huge cut, which also means that you know, um, if 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 the West has to ship, uh, I mean, shift the manufacturing base back home from Asia and Middle East, that means, uh, and and that end product which which is made in USA or made in West, has to stand along an Asian Chinese or an Indian product. What that means is that it is a cut into salary levels of Americans of around sixty percent if you have to stand that competition, right? So it's a massive trim to the Western economy and their lifestyle. So this is what I believe we are heading towards. No, very, very logical analysis because you study history and, and that's how you have come up with this. Uh, and you are partly true because we see it happening also. So it gradually is happening. So one of the biggest worries, like... Uh, very interesting if you look at the map of USA and look at all the southern countries, Mexico or Guatemala, Costa Rica, right up to Peru or southern up to Chile. Most of them are heavily dependent on the US and all of them are poor countries. Not a single one is a developed country. Whereas just north of USA is Canada, which is a developed country. And then you have Europe. So north from USA starts the developed world. And, and the world for the West just means UK and USA. Generally, two or two or three countries are classified as the West. The rest of everyone calls themselves either European or something else. So th we have seen this. So will, is the American economy not helping the other economies or why the rest of the countries are poor south of USA and all, everyone north of USA is rich? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you look at the dollar reserve currency formula, which Nixon and Henry Kissinger jointly created. And I believe that no mature civilization would come up with this, uh, uh, sorry to say, a very dumb formula to stay rich. Because what happens is, uh, you know, a civilization which has the wisdom of being a continuously living civilization like that of India and China would never go for this kind of formulas of uh, staying rich by just printing money or just by having money and passively investing in some, somebody else's business, right? The, the extreme proportions of debt, which has increased in the West uh, because of this particular lifestyle, spending lifestyle, one life consumption model, which comes from this Abrahamic religious value of that. This is the only one life that you have and you need to consume everything in this life itself and this life itself you need to win. So from this comes this consumption model based on debt and credit, right? So you need to understand that the Western countries, instead of the southern part, which uh, Aditya ji, you are talking about, uh, the South America portions, right? Instead of choosing them, the Western countries chose to tie up uh, and shift manufacturing to Asia, right? Because one thing you need to understand, uh, wherever there's going to be a massive amount of manufacturing or you know a model of export economy, which like the Chinese have, um, there's going to be a lot of pollution right, wherever the, there's going to be manufacturing. So there's going to be an uh, exploitation of the natural resources in those areas. But, you know, the Western countries chose Asia to be the manufacturing hub. And I'll tell you, there's a, there's a logic behind why they chose the Chinese specifically, the Chinese labor specifically. Let me put one uh, quick fact about, you know, why, why China is also moving towards de-dollarization, why they also do not want to do any more of exports to the West. Um, in the last 40 years of the exports that Chinese have done, they made around three trillion dollars in their reserves. That's the profit they made. 
right? Literally. America printed around $14 trillion in just last three years and distributed to Americans for free. All right. So there is a sense of realization that the entire effort of becoming the manufacturing engine for the world got wasted because the United States dollar looted them like some colony. All right. Or should I say it's because of the torture of the Chinese labor that the Western countries are enjoying the freedoms, the good climate uh, and the democratic rights, which the West talks about. So what I see now happening is that Asia is saying no more. We are not going to uh, make our invoices in dollar terms. We are not going to make our payments in dollar terms. We are not going to reference and value what we produce and sell in dollar terms. So this is what we are heading towards. Now, as you rightly point out that there are poor countries in South America where which is which can become an option to Asian manufacturing. Perhaps that is what uh, one of the clues we may get uh, here from. Uh, but the fact remains that uh, this particular fiat model of just having a financialization role for and being reached by that, that's not a long term wise formula. I mean, someone like me, and I mean, people talk Henry Kissinger as some, you know, a very expert diplomat uh, of those uh, years. But that is a very short span. I mean, 50 years, if your formula is breaking like this, I don't think it's a wise formula. So if South, if, if United States or the Western countries are thinking that the developed world, so-called, are going to think that they are going to shift the manufacturing from Asia to South American poor nations, and that is how they can still continue being rich. I really doubt that because many of the uh, South American countries are on board on this de-dollarization decision because countries of the world have realized that uh, the, the social benefits which are being printed in endlessly in the United States, uh, that that cost is being passed to them when they do transactions and invoicing in dollar terms. So it's basically the rest of the world taking the burden of the American lifestyle. It cannot happen anymore. I mean, it's been 50 years. It cannot happen anymore. You know, it's very natural that uh, a population, a large population automatically will be economically pro uh, pro prosperous because population itself creates economic opportunities where more people can sell and and throughout the uh, you know if you look at the india's relationship with the west india has been pressurized for the last 50 years to open up the economy so that the western rule based order countries can put their rules on the indian economy and the indian buyer and we have seen that extensively happening that's called rule based order where the rule is made by the west and the the rest have to follow the order. That's a rule-based order. Now, and the so, but we see that gradually, you correctly said that it's a finance which drives everything. So here we see that the the economic disadvantages of an Indian entrepreneur versus a Western entrepreneur were to raise the capital. Very, very basic thing, raise the capital because the dollar-denominated capital would always be more, uh, I mean, economically uh, producing for people. Now, we also are seeing one thing that the that with the level of entrepreneurship increasing in India, like India is one of the fastest unicorn countries where it created maximum unicorns in last 20 years, actually, mm -hmm. and then anywhere else at the rate of uh, creation is phenomenal. But still, they, they are still dependent on the Western financial institutions to, mm -hmm. to do their global sales and other things. How do you think that can be replaced? Because it's already entrenched into the system, the SWIFT payment methodology, payment system, and other systems are already there, which are very mature. And to raise capital in the dollar denominated trade is very easy as compared to the Indian rupee. What do you see that what do you see this situation as? So this is this is exactly where the BRICS nations are making up a format of operating. Right. Uh, they are making a standard payment system, which is outside of the Western SWIFT uh, 
uh, payment system outside of the United States dollar. Uh, the BRICS nation has also started an NDB, the New Development Bank, which which is situated. I mean, it's the headquarters are in China, but the regional office is located in the gift city Gujarat of India, uh, and I see that becoming as uh, you know uh, uh, coming up as a new world central bank kind of a thing for de-dollarization purpose because no western banks i mean no transactions which would have western exposure uh, would allow a non-dollar kind of a transaction that is what the BRICS nations are going to face the very first thing as they go for this kind of trials so what i see now is that Completely outside of the U.S. dollar, the BRICS nation are trying to make up, uh, you know, a, a new setup kind of a thing. And all the multilateral agencies, which are a unipolar dollar-led world, which was created after the Second World War, the be it United Nations or the IMF or the World Bank, are going to face a gradual reduction uh, of influence because when the entire chunk of, you know, what size of population? Russia, India, and China. I mean, and Brazil and South Africa. If 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 you remove this chunk of population, what is left? I mean, in terms of population size of the world. So the international community that remains is United United States and UK. So so this is what's going to happen. Uh, there is going to be a gradual reduction of importance of all the global multilateral agencies, which are unipolar dollar led, uh, uh, primarily uh, instituted in that format. So uh, this is where we are heading towards, uh, specifically because the West failed to realize. Uh, I think if, if I was sitting in Washington, the first advice I would have given in 2016 itself was, uh, hi, take, take India on board on the United Nations Security Council with the veto power. I mean, the West has completely failed in terms of diplomatic wisdom uh, to take India on board and probably that could have saved some kind of relevance for the West in the in the new world that is coming up. I see United States is not just, I mean, you forget about the Europe because Europe is going to completely capitulate to whoever demands whatever. I mean, it's just reduced to some tiny islands after the deindustrialization and uh, demilitarization that it is facing after this winter. Uh, United States, if it wants to, you know, sustain some kind of geopolitical relevance that it should have, uh, uh, it should have taken India on board on the United Nations Security Council, which it failed to do so, which is why Russia and China is able to uh, loop in India into a new world where there is no one currency bossing around, no one nation bossing around. It is going to be a basket of all the participant nations. It is going to be the first multilateral, truly democratic currency which is going to come up and with free entry and exit for participant nations. And, you know, even the tiniest country like, say, say Nepal or Maldives are going to have... Uh, representation in that basket of BRICS currency, the new reserve currency that is going to come up, which means that, you know, there's no way the West can stop what has kick-started, especially when, uh, you know, the central banks of the big Asian giants have already collected the gold and silver in physical terms to do the de-dollarization of the world. I think it's it's over for the West. So if you study the history in the 15th century, when the Europe was facing extreme poverty, uh, 15th century, 13th century, they started facing, and 15th century is that's where they started colonization to maintain, to get wealth from other countries to sustain the church actually in the Europe. That was the whole goal of uh, colonization was to sustain the church. And so so that happened. World War One, World War Two, were to stop Germany from becoming the economic powerhouse, take it from the West. West means UK and USA primarily. These are the two countries who make policies. And the uh, and rest of the world had to follow. Would you think that that will entail a third world war? So that because the West wants to maintain the control on the resources. Uh, I truly do not think that uh, the era of real wars do exist these days. I believe all these are scripted wars uh, with outcomes which are predetermined among nations. I mean, if you look, if you take an example of the Ukraine conflict right now, I mean, anybody can tell you that. This is not how Russia wars. I mean, they can wrap up a war between four to five days if they want, right? So everybody understands that this is a de-dollarization war which is happening where there's a tacit understanding between 
uh, United States, Russia, India, and China that, hey, look, let's finish off uh, EU and UK currencies and let's keep US dollar and the BRICS currency, which is going to come up as the only two options left. So I clearly see, I mean, if United States wanted to stop de-dollarization, uh, why would uh, they let the destruction of its own allies in Europe right now? I mean, if you are intent on uh, using military might to stop de-dollarization on any of the BRICS participants, say small or big, you would want your allies strong, not just economically and, you know, uh, diplomacy wise, but also in terms of war supplies, you would want the, that support from them. So I see it's United States, Russia, India and China, all four biggies who have decided that let's finish off the allies currencies because that is more easier than, uh, you know, warring each other with, you know, all our nuclear powers, all four of them. So instead of United States choosing to war with any of the nuclear powers like Russia, India, China, or some, you know, some uh, small countries in the sphere of influence of this BRICS formula, which is coming up, instead of doing that, I think United States chose to finish off the allies' economies and currencies to sustain some value for the dollar, which is why I see um, next year, uh, you will see there will be economic I mean, massive economic crisis in the United States, where the United States dollar is sucking back all the reserve currency bubble from the U.S. stock market, U.S. bonds, U.S. derivatives, after which uh, it is going to suck back and kill all the private cryptos. It will also kill uh, the U.K. and the EU currencies. And finally, what we will have is just the U.S. dollar. So U.S. dollar will suck up all these values in itself by killing all of this. And after that, once the digital dollar comes up uh, to launch for public usage, I think uh, some kind of a regulated collapse is what United States is working on for its economy because the economy has to be trimmed. I think I don't think uh, this valuations of the reserve currency bubble can any more continue uh, with this currency. So I do not see any kind of world war happening because these days, uh, whatever happens you internally sabotage the nations and if any war script has to happen the outcomes i believe are already decided those days are gone when we, we used to have real wars which would you know be full attack mode and finishing off in two three days kind of a thing true i mean i mean you you made a startling i mean it has to come from you because you make such a pronounced and uh, prediction which is backed with facts also looks like very credible you have researched it well. One question comes, it has come from the audience actually, is that when we are looking for a spending model of the American economy, which is extremely high, and which actually means that the FDI, other people have to invest in US, you already said it, to make sure that the Americans live a very high quality or spending economy. And that spending economy drives many countries. Uh, including China has become rich because of USA. Taiwan is rich because of USA. Japan is rich because of USA. And the Europe, most of the German cars are sold in the USA. Now, most of these countries have reaped the benefit of this spending economy. Then why would they would like to, to put an axe on their own feet? So, so I did explain you by just one example. Four decades of Chinese labor, they made only three trillions in reserves. Right. That's the profit they made with laboring for four decades for the entire world. All right. And United States printed 14 trillion in just last three years and distributed for free. OK, so you need to understand that the uh, the real manufacturers and producers are realizing uh, that, you know, we are not getting fair valuations for what we produce. So you have to understand, I mean, if I take to uh, you to an example of uh, Indian economy, uh, say in the 1950s and 1960s, uh, there was a whole set of individualism wave which the Western agencies created in India, where the people were told that, uh, hey, look, why don't you ask rights from your parents, brothers and sisters instead of asking from the state? So all the enterprising Indians and 
the farming economy, which I mean, which we were, we were giving 27 percent of the to the world GDP on an average for 1700 years with enterprising model of uh, uh, the economic style that we had. So all these uh, Indian population, they started asking share from the family corpus. They came to urban cities and started doing jobs. All right. So you need to understand that a perpetually rich economy is always an enterprising society. Uh, when, when the entire chunk of middle class is enterprising rather than doing jobs, that is the formula of staying perpetually rich. That is how Asia was so rich for 1700 years out of 2000 years. That is 85% of human history. All right. So we have to understand that the valuations which we are getting, the Asians, the exporter nations which you talked about, they are not getting fair valuations with the US dollar because the US, uh, entire savings of the world is parked in the US dollar because it is the safest destination. Why it is the safest destination? Because it is printed out of thin air, right? You can get immediate payment on the US dollar, right? If you are invested there, right? So this entire fiat model is going to collapse. What Asia and right now Xi Jinping has uh, started doing anti-exports moves. I mean, the, the media is reporting that it's because of COVID lockdown, etc., etc. I believe, I believe because I read geopolitical moves, I believe Asia is saying now no more exports. <laughs> and I'll tell you the fundamental reason for that. Um, you know, we are not getting fair valuations when we do it with US dollar as the invoicing and uh, you know, the referencing for valuing what we produce, right? It's three trillions. I mean, it's peanuts for four decades of labor that China did for the entire world. It's peanuts, right? So Asia will require only tiny proportion of exports from the current level of exports that it does. Uh, and it will be hefty rich. This is what my understanding is because the, the two sectors which are manufacturing and farming and gold and silver as precious metals, all four are going to zoom like anything after the BRICS currency launch, particularly because all four were suppressed in terms of valuations to keep the US dollar alive. So this is this is what my understanding is. So the concept of petrodollars, which was also, uh, you know, became prominent after 1979. That uh, petrodollars have become is U.S. is wants uh, dollars, you know, petrol to be bought or exchanged in U.S. dollars. Did you think that that also helped in gaining the value of the dollar to some extent? One hundred percent. And if that the people are moving towards EVs, now India is one obviously becoming the leader in the electric vehicle category now. For the first time when I visited Delhi recently, I saw electric vehicles, public transport and uh, e-rickshaws I saw and I saw the buses also. And I have seen in Mexico City also, but not in the US uh, too much. It's still relying on fossil fuel and the American politicians are still banking on fossil fuel to, to drive the economy. And we have, that's why we are seeing a lot of resistance locally in the US also. So do you think that this phenomena of EVs will actually also contribute toward the demise of petrodollars. So, one of the one of the reason why uh, there is a realization in the Gulf and the Middle East nations uh, is that they have got just thirty years of 30, 30, I mean 30, 35 years of crude oil stock left with them, and the world also realizes that this is not a sustainable model for if you are going to run an economy on vehicles which are transport which is based on fossil fuels which is why the middle east realized that this alliance with the us dollar is something which is holding them back from creating other forms of economy which the middle east should have had developed in the last 50 years so they heavily relied on this finite crude oil resource to run their economics and now they have a realization that they have to detach themselves from the dollar and uh, the nexus or alliance with the United States to uh, diversify their portfolio into other forms of economy like manufacturing or production or services sector or tourism and that kind of stuff, which is why 
you also see that they are making some de-radicalization moves in the Gulf. They have started yoga, Ayurveda, and um, started doing mandirs. Uh, they, they basically chose India to re do begin the de-radicalization process of their community so that the economics can be diversified into other sectors. Now, the rest of the world definitely understands that the fossil fuel is not a viable formula in the long term, right? So uh, there are there are some uh, experiments going on on hydrogen fuel, on lithium batteries, on thorium nuclear reactors in Asia and variety of options which are being worked up upon. Uh, but the U.S. dollar detachment is 100% true. 1973 oil for security deal is over. I mean, this month Xi Jinping is going to visit Saudi Arabia. They have a China-Arab summit. And my reading is that until the BRICS currency launch next year, uh, Saudi Arabia and UAE and the other partners in the Gulf would start selling oil in other currencies and other formats outside of the US dollar, which means an end of the petrodollar and the fiat currency, which US dollar is. Uh, one one last question, because now we spoke on petrodollars and there's a current cap on Russian price, which is export price, which is put to $60. Very, very sensitive topic right now all over the world. Mm -hmm. And the Russia has, has said very clearly they'll reduce production, but not reduce the price cap they won't put the cap india has obviously stayed silent because india gets the maximum benefit out of not putting a cap so what is your view on this situation leading to an economic collapse or a furthering of the war because the war is all about this uh, to like you correctly said to protect the reserve currency so this cap on russian oil or gas is like a joke <laughs> and so and i commented to someone when somebody asked me i said it's like a you know you go to a shop and you say the neighbor has put 99 percent discount on the banner on his on, on the neighbor's shop and and the guy says okay i'll also give 90 percent 99 percent discount so the person asks uh, why don't you give it now then the the shopkeeper says, you know, I'll give it when I don't have stock. <laughs> so it's it's a big joke, uh, and this is a very cruel joke on European Union, not any other countries, because they are going to face this chilling winter of deindustrialization, demilitarization without a war. I mean, the weapon stock are emptying of the European nations without actually even participating in the war. <laughs> and uh, it's demilitarization of NATO, it's disintegration of EU, it's uh, de-dollarization of the world. I mean, there's nothing left which can go wrong for the West. I mean, it's 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 just a, it's, it's like a, you know, a defense expo which has become of the Ukraine conflict where even now the media persons are bored to repeat the news because it's it's scripted and stretched like a chewing gum so that Europe can face the chilly winter and get itself reduced as an economic in economic terms with deindustrialization for keeping sustaining some value for the US dollar. This is what looks like entirely scripted for that. I mean Europeans have always I mean the karma is a bitch is one of my books. Europeans have always faced the karma after 15th century and uh, and they pay it with interest actually. This one is also like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So uh, thank you so much Ankit uh, for coming on the show and thank Thanks. you for all the viewers for watching the show. What an interesting, what a deep insight into this thing. I think no American channel has ever produced a show right now where like this with such deep insights. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. Thank you. And, I really enjoyed. Yep. It's a pleasure to have you and we'll get you more on yep. one of these and other Thank topics. you. Namaste. Thank you.